Thank you. So hello everyone. I am really glad to be talking to you today about a project we've been working on at the National Museum of Natural History here in Paris. So the project is about leveraging multimodality for biodiversity data. What we try to do is we try to explore joint representations of species descriptions and specimen images using a model that was developed by OpenAI, which is CLIP. So uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So in recent years, the, f the field of biodiversity data has seen substantial progress. Next slide, sorry. Okay. So we've witnessed the emergence of powerful models designed to process and extract insights from various data sources. For example, we have seen models that were developed in order to extract structured knowledge from species descriptions, which is uh, textual biodiversity data and other models that were designed to extract morphological features from specimen images, which is based on visual data. Yet, as we delve into the analysis of specimen descriptions and specimen images, a critical need becomes apparent, which is the imperative of joint representations. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the integration or integration of specimen images and species descriptions through joint representations marks a natural progression progression in the extraction of of knowledge from biodiversity data. This approach holds the key to creating a unified vector space, seam, seamlessly accommodating biodiversity information from visual and textual sources. Within this shared space, the idea is to gain capability to quantitatively measure similarities between textual informations, such as species descriptions, and uh, visual information, such as uh, uh, specimen images. Moreover, it empowers us to uh, develop models that can retrieve specimen images based on textual queries related to specific morphological tra traits. In essence, this methodology serves as a coercive bridge, facilitating a more comprehensive and interconnected connected understanding of biodiversity. Next slide, please. So CLIP is a model developed by, um, by OpenAI. CLIP stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training, and it's designed to understand and generate meaningful representations for both textual and visual data, allowing to bridge the gap between language and images. Next slide, please. So during the pre-training, CLIP learns to understand the relationships between uh, diverse images and their associated uh, textual descriptions from the internet, creating a shared space where both text and images can exist. The model's architecture includes components for processing visual information, which is the image encoder here, and components for, uh, for processing textual information, which is the text encoder here. Notably, CLIP is an adept of uh, zero-shot learning, so it mainly means that it can perform ta tasks it wasn't explicitly trained for. So next step, please. Uh, next slide, please, thank you. After pre-training, CLIP can be fine-tuned for specific domains, such as biodiversity in our case. Fine-tuning will involve exposing the model to labeled data related to species descriptions and specimen images. So we will be needing to have pairs of images and uh, their uh, associated uh, descriptions, allowing it to adapt and refine its understanding to domain-specific patterns. In practical use, Researchers can leverage CLIP for tasks like retrieving specimen images based on textual queries, which we will uh, present some results uh, on this task afterwards, or simply measuring similarities between textual, description, textual species descriptions and specimen images. This flexibility and adaptability makes CLIP a valuable tool for researchers exploring the intersection of language and visual data facilitating efficient search and retrieval in a variety of other domains. Next slide, please. So after fine tuning CLIP, the learned multimodal representation space can be used in order to perform image retrieval. So what we are going to try to do is to use a textual query containing morphological characteristics, describing specific traits of interest as an input, 
and CLIP having been pre-trained on to understand the semantic relationships between our specimen images and species descriptions can then navigate its joint embedding space to retrieve specimen images that align with the provided query. This functionality is particularly valuable for tasks such as identifying species based on their morphological characteristics, or in our case, for building a search engine that can be directly applied on the herbarium of the National Museum of Natural History. Next slide, please. Thank you. So in order to train CLIP for the main task it was designed for, uh, which is text image alignment prediction, we create a data set that, co that comprises a collection of 6,271 specimen images directly extracted from the Nas National Museum of Natural History's herbarium, representing uh, 56 plant species, on average, each set of 100, of 100 images corresponds to distinct species. Along with these images, we extract textual descriptions for each species of our data, data set, thus creating a set of text image pairs that can directly be used in order to train CLIP. Next slide, please. So afterwards, in order to test uh, this model on the image retrieval task, we create another data set that contains specimen images, and each image will be associated to a textual query, which will be relevant to that, to that image. And uh, the idea is to test uh, the model after, afterwards using these te textual queries to see if we can retrieve the, uh, the relevant images that were paired to these uh, textual queries. Next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, first we present the, uh, the results on the uh, first task, which is the text image alignment uh, prediction task. What we have done is that we've tested our more uh, three variants of the model. The first one is a zero short model, which wasn't pre-trained on our data. So we, we directly took the pre-trained uh, um, <coughs> clip model and tried to test it on our data. And then we have uh, tested, we have fine-tuned CLIP on our data and tested it. And then afterwards, we have another variant, which is more <coughs> nuanced. So this variant, this variant is uh, mainly a fine-tuned CLIP, but uh, for which we have um, replaced the uh, text encoder by a pre-trained language model that we have worked on and presented last year in TDWG. So um, the, uh, the performances were, co were compared, compared in terms of contrastive loss. So the uh, smaller the loss is, the better the model is. And as we can see here, the fine-tuned uh, model with pre-trained language model is the best one on, uh, this, uh, on our data set on this task. And uh, these results mainly show that specializing CLIP on our particular data can actually lead to better joint text image representations. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as for the results on the image retrieval task, we conducted four different, different experiments. In the first two experiments, N20 and N100, here we asked the model to retrieve a given number of images for each textual query. As we can see, a high number of retrieved images leads to a high recall, but also makes the precision decrease. For the two last experiments, we ask the model to retrieve all the images which are uh, which have uh, a similarity with the textual query that is superior to a given threshold. For example, 0 0.1 here and 0 0.25. One minute. Here. Yes. Okay. As we can see, we achieve the best precision and recall trade-off with, uh, with, with a threshold fixed, fixed to 0 0.1. Okay. So to sum it up, we have developed a joint specimen image and species descriptions uh, representation space that can be used to compute similarities between specimen images and speci species descriptions. Uh, next slide, please, sorry. Next slide. Thank you. So um, to sum it up, we have developed a joint specimen uh, uh, images and species the descriptions 
representation space that can be used to compute similarities between specimen images and species descriptions. And we presented the results of a use case of this representation space used as an image retrieval system that can be seen as a search engine that can be applied on the museum's herbarium afterwards. So thank you very much for your attention. Next slide. Thank you. So thank you very much for your attention and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Maya. That was really interesting. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have questions in the room? Does any, are there any questions online or on Slack? Okay, um, so my question, Maya, would be, uh, you have the, you have been tra training um, on vascular plant specimens. Do you think it would be possible to do a similar thing for, uh, I don't know, like fungi or lichens or things like that as well? And what would it, I mean, it, they might be a bit more sort of difficult for the model to recognize. Um, and do you think it would take, you would need more training data and so on? What do you think about that? Actually, um, the main challenge we have faced when training on herbarium uh, uh, Im images is that most of morphological traits aren't apparent in the uh, herbarium images. We have a lot of descriptions about the color of uh, the flowers, uh, a lot of descriptions about the flowers and so on that we cannot see in the herbarium uh, images. So we have chosen to work on some uh, species that for which we can actually see some of these traits in order to 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 accurately retrieve the images and uh, to learn the uh, the joint representations. I think yeah, uh, moving to learn to to work on fungi would be a real challenge, and maybe it would need a lot more of specimen images and more. Um, um, more dedicated, more specialized species the descriptions that would only describe the uh, morphological traits that we can see on the uh, specimen images. Yeah, I can imagine it would be tricky, but I think it's such a cool idea to be able to search through images like this. I love, I love that idea. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have uh, another question in the room. Hi, Maya Chandra from Hawaii. Um, I have, I, I know um, with specimen descriptions, they, or at least some tend to be based on like type material, right? So you've got that specimen itself. Hopefully you've had that image. Hopefully you would have that imaged. And so I'm curious because this is um, using just various species images regardless of the actual specimen itself, right, to link to a specimen description. I'm curious if um, you think that doing, um, you know, linking specific descriptions to like those type images themselves may solve that question of, you know, that image may not have a specific um, trait associated with it or just, you know, how, um, detailed these kinds of models could possibly be? Could it be down to the exact specimen level or are we still just thinking at, at the species level? Actually, for uh, for now, for the more, the data set we have worked on, we mainly thought on the species le level. So we extract species descriptions from different the data, uh, different data sources and then we link them to the specimen based on the species of that specimen. So uh, we don't work directly on a description of the specimen image because, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to get, and we do not have descriptions of specimen images on all the uh, uh, specimen images of the herbarium we we've worked on. So what we try to do is to do it in a kind of distant. Uh, learn in a manner where we uh, link the uh, textual descriptions based on the uh, type of the specimen which we consider being the uh, the species. I don't know if I've answered your question. She's nodding and giving a thumbs up, so I think that's okay. good. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, so our next speaker is Vamsi Komineni. 